Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to make studying easier when you have a chronic illness. So we'll be talking about things like brain fog, making it physically easier, and also the sources you can use to make that easier. So in terms of making it physically easier, the main thing that I do is work from my bed and it has helped so much. I wouldn't be able to do my degree if I wasn't able to do that. And a lot of courses or when you're studying at school, there's a lot of revision and there's a lot of opportunities where you can just go to bed. So definitely make use of that. There are also some assistive devices that I'm going to talk about that can help. So it could be as simple as getting a lap tray, which just sits on your bed and then it's a bit like a desk, which can be really helpful. And there's also a device called a hold it device, which I'll put a picture in here. That one is a bit more specialist and expensive, but I'll tell you about how I got mine and stuff like that when we get to it. Other things that I do to make it easier on my body is that I don't carry around too many things unnecessarily. So when I first started university last year, I think it's quite common for a lot of people to start with big exercise books like this. And I realised that I just couldn't carry this, especially if you've got one per subject or per module, it gets really heavy really quickly. And especially if you're putting that inside a folder. So along the way, I've just sort of realised that it wasn't necessary. So last year, I picked up these tiny exercise books. They remind me of what you have when you're in primary school. So like, you know, when you're really little. But actually, I found that having many of these and then just using them as you need them was much more effective. And actually, you can still fit a lot of information in there. And it just means if you're carrying, say, two of these, that is a lot easier on your body than two of these. Um, I wish you could feel the difference. It feels a lot more different than it looks. So that would be one of my tips. And of course, with technology, that can also help if you can carry a laptop then that's a really good way to have everything in one place. Of course, you've got the internet and obviously typing for a lot of people, especially me, typing is so much easier than writing. And actually, when it comes to these books, I don't really write a lot down anyway. Another option could be using a dictaphone or voice to text software. For me, I feel really ill after talking for a long time, but if say you've got a lot of hand pain, and you don't really get fatigued and feel sick from talking, then that could be an option. You just have to weigh up, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are. So for a lot of people using a dictaphone or voice to text software can be really helpful. I do use it occasionally, but um, I don't even know what I'm talking about with that because I don't use it very often. And my next tip is about dealing with brain fog. And I found one of the best ways to help deal with that is to use a planner. So this one is too heavy for me, so I don't actually use it. But having a planner to write things down so that you don't forget them is really helpful. So you can plan your days, but also just anything you think of that you might forget. Make sure you're writing it down somewhere or typing it, and that can be really helpful. And then once you've got everything in one place, it's also a lot easier to prioritise. So sometimes if I've got a lot of things to do, I can feel quite flustered and not know where to start. But seeing it written somewhere and having all of that information in one place can help you realise what's the most important, what to do first, and potentially you might not even need to do some of the things on your list. That may be positive thinking. What's the word? That pos no, not positive thinking, what is it? Where you think positively but it's not realistic to think positively. Hmm. And I guess just generally writing lists and writing stuff down comes into that. Another way that that could be helpful is if you're in a lecture and it's difficult for you to write all the information down or if your brain just can't focus on it in that moment is to write down the page numbers or the slide numbers and then you can come back to it and work on it when you are feeling ready. I do that a lot of the time so I'll start being okay and I'll take notes normally and then as soon as I can feel my mind slipping I don't force myself through it because it just doesn't work so I just write down a page number or slide number 
or you know wherever that source is and then I come back to it when I feel able to and my next tip sort of links with that and that's working little and often and just when you're feeling like you can if you're really really struggling and making yourself feel terribly ill over it then the content of your work probably isn't going to be the best anyway so I've learned that when I'm feeling really ill that taking time out actually in the long run it makes you more productive and that time is not wasted because you're getting better and then when you are able to work you can do the best that you can do so that one can be quite hard but yeah that one is quite hard isn't it especially when you want to work and you can't then lastly my tip is to talk to your lecturers or your teachers because often there's things that they can do that you haven't thought of or there's things that they can put in place that you can't on your own so a lot of the time you'll be able to get extra time you'll be able to use assistive devices like computers or whatever software you need to use if you need that they might be able to give you breaks or there just might be things that you haven't thought about that they can put in place for you so we'll talk about school and university separately so with school a lot of the time they have a pastoral team i think it's called i didn't get any help in school because i wasn't diagnosed they were awful to be honest but if you just talk to your teacher they can probably put you in the right direction and there's probably things that can be done to help and then at university, especially in the UK, it's a slightly different system. Your lecturers will be able to help in as many ways as they can, but we also have funding, which is called Disabled Students Allowance, and you go through a meeting and then they, they figure out so many things that can help you. So I went to my assessment and they are really for you. So we have a lot of assessments here where it seems like they're against you and they don't want you to get help but the University Disabled Students Allowance is not like that. They really do want to help and they will find as many things as possible that can help you. So definitely speak up and let people know because sometimes just because you can't think of something that can help, other people might have answers, especially teachers. They probably taught a lot of people and they might be able to think of something. So I think they were all of my tips, but definitely leave any you have below and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.